Hi everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at some equations of motion, past paper questions, and we'll be doing quite a challenging one. So let's jump right in. So our first question says a car initially at rest moves with a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared east. Calculate the magnitude of the velocity after 10 seconds. Now, when they say a car is initially at rest, it means that its initial velocity or its initial speed is zero. And it's moving with a constant acceleration. Now in grade 10, 11 and 12, we will always be working with constant acceleration. Constant velocity and constant acceleration two very different things. Remember, if there's acceleration, it means that the car is either speeding up or slowing down. The velocity is changing in some way. Remember, if that's a constant velocity, it means that it's traveling with the same speed. It's not slowing down, it's not speeding up. Okay, but it is changing velocity or changing speed because it's got an acceleration of two meters per second squared east. So to calculate the magnitude of the velocity after 10 seconds, we're essentially looking for the final velocity. Now, what we can do is because they give me acceleration and I'm looking for final velocity, I have initial, I've got time, I can actually also use this formula. Acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. As you know, change is final minus initial divided by time. And then we substitute in. So acceleration is 2. Let's say east. Let's choose east as our positive direction. So positive 2. Final velocity is what I'm looking for. Initial velocity is 0. And my time is 10 seconds. So how you would do this is you're dividing by 10 over here. You're dividing by 10. So you take the 10 over. You multiply by 10. So 2 times 10 is 20. And then VF minus 0 is just VF. So your final velocity is 20 meters per second. They don't want a direction because they say magnitude. Magnitude simply mean, means the amount or the size. So 20 meters per second. You have to always give a unit, but you don't need to give a direction. If the question just said, I must calculate the velocity after 10 seconds, then I would have to say 20 meters per second east. And without the east, you would get the answer wrong. But because it says magnitude, you don't need to give a direction. So that's one way to calculate it. The other way is to use this equation of motion, which is basically this formula, just rearranged. So you could write down your equation first, your blank formula first, then you substitute, you're looking for the final, the initial is zero, the acceleration is two, and we're traveling for 10 seconds. So essentially two times 10, 20. Same answer because it's basically the same formula. They, they then ask you to calculate the distance covered during the first 10 seconds. So what we know so far is that the initial velocity is zero, the final velocity is 20, and the acceleration is two, and the time is is 10 seconds. They want to know distance. So I can choose pretty much any formula that I want because I have all of the other variables. So pick whichever one makes you happy, whichever one suits you best. I would maybe pick either this one or this one because displacement or distance is already isolated. So let's pretend you chose the first one. Remember to always write down your blank formula first. So in other words, just your plain formula with no numbers in it yet. Then you substitute. So VI is zero. Time is 10. Acceleration is 2, time is 10. Don't forget to square time in this formula. And if you work that out, you should get 100 meters. Now, like I said, you could have used this formula as well or this one. You get your marks for blank formula, substitution, answer with units. Now the difficult question, six marks. An airplane has an unknown initial velocity. So I'm going to just list over here, VI question mark. I don't know what it is. After traveling a distance of 3,500 meters, so my displacement, my distance is 3,500 meters, while accelerating at a constant acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Remember, every time you see the negative 2, you know that that is acceleration, not velocity. Velocity doesn't have a negative 2, it has a negative 1. So while accelerating at that constant acceleration, it doubles its velocity important, interesting. Calculate the time it took to double the velocity. So we're looking for time. So what I want you to do now is I want you to try and see if you can do this question by yourself, see which formula you would pick, see what method you would do. First, please try it yourself, challenge yourself, see if you can get all six marks and then do it with me. Okay, so 
What's very important to note is that we don't know the initial velocity, we don't know the final velocity, and we don't know the time. So it seems like there's too many unknowns. If you've seen my previous videos on equations of motion, I've told you that in each of these equations, so one, number one, number two, number three, and number four, in each of these equations, we have four unknown variables. So for example, one, two, three, four. In this one, there's one, two, three, four. Time is just repeated, so four variables in total. And when we choose an equation of motion to use, we need at least two Sorry, we need at least three out of the four variables. You need three out of the four, otherwise you can't find the fourth one. So the fourth one that I'm looking for in this case is time. I'm looking for time. Time features in nearly all of them except for this one, number three. So I'm going to scratch number three out because it's not going to help me necessarily to get the final answer. Okay. However, there's other stuff that I also don't know. I don't know VI and I technically don't know VF. So I only know two. I need to know three. But what I do know is that the velocity doubled. So my first, my initial velocity is VI. My final velocity can basically be rewritten as two times VI. I don't know if that makes sense, but VI is my initial velocity. I don't know what it is. My final velocity is two times VI. It's double what VI is. So let's pretend VI is 10. VF would be 20. If VI was 30, VF would be 60. Basically, just take your initial and times it by 2. So what I can basically do is I can rewrite VF as being 2 times VI. Then what I'm going to do is remember the equation I scratched out in the first place because I said it doesn't have time in it. What I'm going to do is I'm first going to use that equation because it doesn't have time, because I don't know time. I'm going to use the one that does not have time to first work out what VI would be. So keep following me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this equation and write it down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in everything that I know. Like I said, I don't know what VF is, but I know that VF is equal to double VI. So VF can be rewritten as 2 times VI. Okay, so instead of VF, I'm simply writing 2 times VI in the place of VF. Then I've got VI squared plus 2A, acceleration is 5, displacement, distance is 3,500. Now I know that that might not look helpful, but simplify it and see what happens. So basically what I have here is 2VI and I'm going to square that. So you square the 2, so 2 squared and VI squared. So what is 2 squared? 2 squared is 4 and then we've got VI squared. Here I've also got VI squared plus what is 2 times 5 times 3,500? I've got 35,000. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but algebraically, this is very, very possible and very, very easy. So we bring the VIs, the VI squares to one side. So I've got 4VI squared minus 1VI squared equals 35,000. Then I've got what's 4 minus 1? 3VI squared and 35,000. Divide both sides by 3, which gives me the following, okay, this is a recurring number, and then I square root both sides to get VI by itself. Opposite of square is square root, and I get 108,012345. Don't round it off because we're not done with the question. Now, what we've just done is we found VI. So what I now know is I know VI, it's that 108 comma whatever. VF is just double that. So VF would be two times 108 comma 0, 1, 2, 3. So VF would technically then be, if I times that by 2, I get 216 comma 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 9. So I know VI, I know VF, I know acceleration, I know displacement, and now I can find time. So there's the list of the variables that I now have. I'm looking for time. Now we can pick any one of the formulas that has time inside of it. I'm going to choose the first one. Just remember, we can't round off. We can't round off VI or VF yet because we're not at the end of the question. So we substitute in. And when you substitute in, remember not to round off like I just mentioned. Keep all the decimals. If you don't feel like writing them all out on the page, at least keep them all on your calculator. 
acceleration is five and time is what we're looking for. So how do we solve this? We say this minus this. And of course, I just get 108 comma zero one, two, three, four, five, because this one is double that. And then five multiplied by delta T. So you just divide both sides by five and your final answer for time. Now you're allowed to round off should be 21 comma six zero. My calculator says six zero two four and so on, but 21 comma six zero seconds. Don't forget your units. And very important to note that your unit is S. If you want to write out the full word seconds, that's also fine. But please don't write S-E-C as your unit. You'll get it wrong. There we go. That was the difficult question. I hope that that was helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everybody.